Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we came to Eleutheria for the first time and made our way over to Pan. And that's where we ended the episode. Haven't explored Pan at all. Although we did explore Winter's Reside, which is the, uh, what is it called? It's not a station. It's a platform. It's one of the platforms for, uh, judging by the fact that there's three platforms, I think it's one of the three factions. This one was for the revolutionaries. But haven't explored the other two or Pan itself. So King's Idol Station. As exuberant as an old pirate den of the Caribbean. Why did I say Caribbean? That's a totally valid pronunciation, but normally I say Caribbean. Like Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirate Den of the Caribbean. I don't know, I guess I just switch it all the time and it doesn't matter. As exuberant as an old pirate den of the Caribbean, Pan Station teams with thieves and merchants, smugglers and evangelicals of inventive new cults. And a grove nearby is the seat of the Cypress King, who has little power. The Cypress King who has little power. That's an intriguing sentence. Well, heck, before anything else, I want to recruit a feline eccentric. A woman sits at the station side in oil-stained overalls. There's an awesome portrait. I wonder if that cat's a main Coon, maybe? Sort of looks like it. Three overfed, baleful cats lounge near her. I'm looking for work, she says, climbing to her feet. The cats observe you with naked hostility. <laughs> I'm afraid they're part of the package, she says, indicating them. Heck yeah, I'll take you on. You always have room for a good engineer, even one with cats. I wonder how the overly big dog and the cats are going to get along. The feline eccentric is a chief engineer who increases mirrors by six, hearts by two, and affiliation villainy by one. <laughs> the feline eccentric is villainous? Oh, that's even more perfect for me. A new officer. As she climbs aboard, she pats your locomotive's boiler fondly. Hello, my girl. She makes her way towards her new cabin. The cats tangle around her feet, almost tripping her. Yeah, cats always do that. Man, especially, especially Transbian, she loves to just trip you up, especially when she thinks she's about to be fed. It's terrifying sometimes, like, it's both I'm worried for myself, but also I'm really worried for her as well, because, you know, you could, you're so much bigger than a cat, you could really mess them up. Let's see if I want to equip them, actually, as my... Uh, chief Engineer. Oh, probably not. Because we have the Judicious Driver, which gives us the plus 10 iron. And the two affiliation with Establishment, which, I mean, Establishment isn't exactly my thing, but, you know, they've their story's been finished, so they kind of have extra stats. Yeah, I won't equip them. But let's speak with them. She has a cabin, but usually sleeps on a spare mattress in the engine room. There, she can hear the rhythm and rumble of the engine and wake when it hiccups. Her cats have all found favorite places among the machinery and pipework. Um, I can either break the ice with an offer of approved reading material or an offer of illicit reading material. Don't have either. I think I, uh, yeah, I do have some literature in the bank I could grab. Can't get illicit literature that easily, though. God, the illicit reading material would be a lot more fun. But it's a lot harder to get. I mean, I think each region only has one type of export. Or at least each smuggling place only has one type of export. I'm not sure if there's multiple smuggling places per zone sometimes. But I know in Albion it was just the literature. It was the only thing you could export from there. Then from the Reach, I think it was just the Firkins of Red Honey, because the only station there was Titania that sold smuggling goods. This one almost certainly won't be illicit literature. Yeah, uh, okay, let's grab some normal literature out of the bank. Oh, you know what I've realized, by the way? If you want to speak to one of your officers that are currently equipped to your engine, that's a weird term, but if they're currently equipped, you actually don't have to go to the officer's menu and then click on them. You can just click on them down here. 
but since the eccentric, uh, what was it? The feline eccentric isn't equipped, I have to go here. Break the ice with an offer of approved reading material. When she's not tinkering, when... Oh, I think this is supposed to say with. When she's not tinkering with the engine, she likes to read. Perhaps you'd like to pick through some of the material in the hold? Forded. She smiles. Thanks, cat. A cat hisses furiously at you from its perch on the overhead piping. Stop it, as Modi, the eccentric, scolds. Thanks, Captain, she continues. I brought some books with me, but I've ar a prolonged deafening clamor interrupts her. A second cat is knocked over a toolbox covering the floor in spanners. The third climbs under the engine and becomes trapped in a gauntlet of pumping pistons and whirring wheels. It yowls pitiably. Oh god, save it. You tell her that she can help herself to the books when she's less occupied. Three sets of yellow baleful eyes watch you depart. They seem smug. I don't actually know what baleful means. Define baleful. Threatening harm. Menacing. Yeah. Okay, just, just that menacing, threatening, unfriendly, hostile, antagonistic... As time passes, the eccentric story will progress. So just need to wait now. Can check in. Ah, looks like your hull has to be pretty well repaired to speak with him, otherwise the eccentric will be busy repairing it. That's a pretty cool little kind of story detail, because that makes sense. Their chief engineer, of course they'd be busy and couldn't just chat if the ship is falling apart. I guess I'll do this. Morning, comrade, she says as you approach. She has shadows around her eyes as if she hasn't been sleeping well. One hand is bandaged. Her cats coil about her feet, glaring at you with naked malevolence. You ask if she's alright, and she smiles breezily. Oh yes, mustn't grumble. Perhaps in time she will come to trust you more. Visit the Cypress King or the station? I don't think we should visit the King first. Yeah, let's go to King's Idol Station first. Visit maybe the Cypress King when we understand more about how Pan works. King's Idol Station, here is Pan, the dusky heart of Eleutheria. Built upon the sundered remains of a cathedral of the heavens, now overgrown with midnight groves, it's a refuge for rebels, outcasts, and pariahs for the unloved, the unmourned, and the unbelievable. Several factions have claimed fragments of the ruins, but the central dock is a neutral ground. It heaves with crowds, and the air is filled with cries and music and raving and laughter. Well, all of Eleutheria sounds like the perfect place for me. It also just made me think of the fact that this whole place is for rebels, outcasts, pariahs, unloved, etc., etc. It makes me think of the fact that the sun here has cast the whole place into lawless dark. Kind of seems fitting with uh, without the light to enforce people to act a certain way. Maybe that's why this place is filled with kind of misfits. I don't think misfit is really the right term for rebels, but you know what I mean. Help your aunt find February. Right, the calendar council thing. Mm, yeah. Let's do that. Your aunt's attempts to find out what happened at the St. Dunstan's rendezvous have led you to Winters Reside and the calendar council. We just went to Winters Reside, but we couldn't actually do anything there because we... I think we needed to like be in the good graces with the rebels before they would really let me in to anything. Approaching Winters Reside... I've sent back the card. She's expecting us, your aunt says, leading you through the tumbled ruin of Pan. Lined. Actually, it doesn't say lined. L limbed? L-I-M-N-E-T. Is that a word I'm not familiar with or a misspelling? Limbed. Oh, yeah, that is a word. Limbed. Depict or describe in painting or words. Miss Reed limbs a gentler world in her novels, is an example sentence. 
Oh, it can also mean suffuse or highlight something with a bright color of light. So which way was it used in the game? Um, limbed by pale moonlight. So that's talking about the suffuse or highlight something with a bright color or light. Your aunt rummages in her handbag. Oh wait, I didn't finish this. Uh, she's sending a coach. We're here. Or we're to wait here. Your aunt rummages in her handbag as you wait. Boiled sweet, she says hopefully. Looks as if it could crack your jaw. Suit yourself. The only sound as you wait is the crunch of the sweet. And then, slowly and silently, a black carriage appears through the mist. The masked driver bids you enter the cabin. Your aunt does not hesitate to get in. Come along, she says impatiently, beckoning you inside. The cruelest month. February, the cruelest month. The sedan leaves you on the crooked street of Winter's Reside in front of a severe townhouse. The door is open and the lights are on. A handsome woman waits in the doorway to greet you. Her smile is wintry and her eyes pale as new frost. I got your card. I'm willing to talk. Come inside. Talk to February. She attended the St. Dunstan's rendezvous. She must be able to tell you what was discussed. And just as a reminder, in case you've forgotten, the, uh, the rendezvous was the place where I think it was four people had met and um, basically planned, I think it was the how to murder the sun in Albion? How to conquer Albion? And... Well, obviously, February was there. The Queen was there. Remember, an experimental weapon was used by the Queen to kill a son? So we've heard. And then a couple other people as well. Gathering information. Afraid I can't help much, old thing, February says as she ushers, ushers you into her parlor. White moonlight floods its great bay windows. Anything you can tell us, your aunt says, before gasping. Deary me! Almost forgot. She fishes in her enormous handbag and produces the bottle of brandy. For old time's sake. How lovely, February murmurs. I'll fetch some glasses. She leaves the two of you alone. Your aunt immediately starts rummaging under the cushions. She's hiding something. I was very junior at the time. Practically a secretary, February's voice floats through. Your aunt stands up straight as February returns, carrying three glasses. February hands you each a glass of your aunt's brandy. London did approach us about building an unclear bomb. We had an enemy in common, the masters of old London. By that they mean the sun, or suns. The calendar council helped make them an unclear bomb. We used it to blow up the sun. She shrugs. But that's ancient history. Not sure why you bothered me with all this. Still, shall we raise a toast? To old acquaintances, never forget. No, never forgot, rather. Wait, I just want to back up for a second. That's ancient history. Uh, was that like 20 years ago? It's not very ancient. So we had an enemy in common. Why did the Calendar Council hate the, the son or sons of Albion? Well, the Calendar Council is a group of rebels, right? If so, then I guess they wouldn't appreciate the, the harsh laws imposed on everybody by the sun, forced on everybody. So I could see that. Let's raise our glass. The brandy's amber as the death of a sun. Your aunt's eyes are on February. February raises her brandy glass, like a conductor preparing her orchestra. To the end of all tyrannies, to alliances forged for the breaking of chains. Your aunt nods and begins to sip her brandy. Her expression is worrying, hazardous almost. Seeing her drink, February follows suit. Hmm. Drink or feign drinking? Uh. Yeah, I'm getting creeped out by all this. Let's feign drinking. Better safe than sorry. You raise the glass to your lips and make as if to imbibe. Condensation from the glass drips onto your chin, and then you lower your brandy. 
Does this taste a little off to you? February asks, and then keels over. Your aunt pours the remainder of her brandy onto the floor. Deary me, she's even more susceptible than I remembered. Very clever of you not to drink. Help me have a rummage through her papers, will you? You spend a frantic few minutes searching February until you discover a folio concealed in her left boot. This'll do, your aunt says. Now let's make sure we're not seen leaving. Your aunt has poisoned February and stolen her note. <laughs> Damn, inconvenient aunt. Starting to like you. I guess I should probably just go speak with them now, right? Yeah, help your aunt go through February's papers. Need three savage secrets. The secrets of St. Dunstan's Rendezvous were locked behind a nigh impenetrable cipher. The revolution betrayed. Piles of pages are strewn across her cabin. I've been impersonating February in some correspondence to get more information, your aunt says in explanation. It's not like she's going to object. Working together, you discover the key to the cipher. Various calendars, from the Roman to the Revolutionary. From the documents, you learn that February knew that the final design for the bomb was held by Her Majesty's Privy Counselor? He died and is now interred in the most serene mausoleum. If we could find those designs, we'd know for certain what our government agreed to, your aunt says. Oh, that is so tantalizing. God, I just want to go back right now, but no. I'm not going back to Albion until the Wayfair update. Let's go back to the King's Idol station. I'm surprised there isn't more story stuff to do at the main hub. At least, not in the King's Idol station. I mean, compared to London, where it took me, I think, like two full episodes just to go through everything that was in London. But there might be a bunch of stuff in the Cypress Kings, and there also might be a bunch of stuff with the other factions at the other platforms. So I think it might just be kind of more spread out. There's a lot of shops, though. Speaking of, I have a lot of money. Oh, I bet they have a lot of Tier 3 stuff here. Uh, God, I want to do that right now, but no. No, no, no. I'll save that for later. Let's visit the Cypress King. Pan has no ruler, but it does have a king. The position is not a powerful one, nor secure. Their only real authority is to rule on any disagreements that can't be settled at the Forum. During the Hour of Thorns, anyone can challenge the king and, if successful, take the crown. In a burgundy grove, shaggy with vines and moss, the current Cypress King resides. A scarred smuggler with iron-gray hair and a knife in her hands. She has an assessing gaze and an inclination towards unnecessary frankness. I'm curious what uh, anyone can challenge the king means. Challenge in what way? Like, challenge them to a vote? Challenge them to a duel? Like, what's the challenge? I feel like it might be a duel. Given the sorts of people that are here, and given the fact that the current Cypress King is a smuggler with just a knife openly in their hands... Hmm, consider bringing port reports to the king. Ask the king how to leave Eleutheria. I should probably figure that out. That'd be good just to be able to leave it, even if I don't intend to. I can exchange knowledge for a searing enigma. One moment of inspiration. Two of my crew? What's going to happen to my crew? And five savage secrets. That's a good trade. I don't know if I have a Searing Enigma right now. Ah, oh, here it is. It's an Acad... I'm just going to call it Academia. I have two Searing Enigmas. Well, I guess I won't do it right now, then. I don't have any particular need for moments of inspiration or Searing Enigmas. Let's consider bringing port reports to the king. Storytelling is forbidden in Pan. What? Why? And one of the duties of the Cypress King is to trade mysteries for Skyfarer's stories of other places before they can be inflicted on the city at large. Better than coin. Though the dockside businesses use sovereigns for convenience, for most other purposes, mysteries are a more valuable currency in Pan. 
is a city of secrets and of initiations. Fascinating. The Cypress King will trade Eleutherian mysteries for your port reports. You can trade them for various functions in Pan. Ask the king how to leave Eleutheria. The relay station by which you entered the region was broken. How then might you leave? The king knows. You are informed that the Eagles Empyrean, London's nominal allies in opening the path to the sky, maintain a transit gate that leads back to the Reach. The Empyrean lies somewhere in Eleutheria. Beyond the Belt of Midnight. The Belt of Midnight. Okay. Well, that's it for the story stuff. Directly at Pan, let's check out the shops. All right. Prospects. Um, like, I don't intend to go back anywhere for a while, and I mean, right now I can't go back. So I think I'm just going to dump all of this. Even the red honey for the mausoleum, even though I need eight more honey, which could be very lucrative. I think, well, okay, I'll leave that one, but I'll drop the others. Unless I need the space for the, for kind of, uh, for the honey thing. If I need to replace it, I will, but I don't right now. Flowers in the dark, seeds to Ackley's. A battle-scarred youth waters a patch of soil. Nothing yet, they say, smiling. When I was a ringbreaker on Ackley's, we tried starting a garden in the marsh. Didn't take. Could have been beautiful, though. I'm sure Sigrid would love to try again. Five sacks of verdant seeds would be a good start. Ackley's lies to the south southwest of Pan. That's sort of where I came from, roughly. So south-southwest should be somewhere like here. I'll take that. Gift for the Thorn Maiden, souls to Caducius. Caducius. Caducius? Caducius. A frustrated devil waits outside the gates, barred entry by the rose binders. I miss old London. Your people were so much freer with your souls. <laughs> I have to bring back something to lure... He stops abruptly. I, I don't suppose you have five jumbles of undistinguished souls, do you? For now, I crave quantity over quality. Caduceus lies to the east-northeast of Pan. East-northeast. So, like, here? Take that as well, I suppose. The night market. They'll take anything here. Anything and everything. Oh, the engineering. Oh, let's save that for last. I'm so excited by what's going to be there. Let's take a look at what ships they have. Nightingale Engine Yard. The Nightingale Yard, the gleaming pride of Pan, endeavors to outdo all its rivals, whether mortal or stellar. Price should be the only barrier to quality craftsmanship. So this is the ship that I had before. I think... Yeah, that's just the other one that's like in the same... It costs the same as the Pelinor class trader that I had. This is different. 10,000 coin. Media class destroyer. Forceful, terrible, unbreakable. Manufactured only in Pan and designed to withstand the rigors of Eleutheria's perpetual night. Yeah, it looks pretty well stealthed. It's a pretty dark ship, which would be very stealthy, I think, around here. Oh yeah, and this. This is the same one that I think we saw even all the way back in the Reach. Yeah. Wow, before this 10,000 coin thing seems so completely out of reach, but like, I'm actually not that far from being able to afford it. Damn. Let's see how these compare. Let's just look at the stats. So this one has two heavy weapons, which is, it can only be good because you can put heavy weapons in them or small armaments. So it just gives you more options. Probably would want the heavy weapons. I assume those do more damage. It has three things of armor instead of my two. Uh, two bridge pieces or slots instead of just one. Hmm. It does only have one auxiliary slot, surprisingly. And wow, also surprisingly, a lot less hold space. 
and less people. More fuel efficiency, a little bit more health. I don't, that doesn't seem that amazing, actually. I mean, it's pretty good. The hold space bothers me. And I usually use the auxiliary slots, like this ratty baggage handlers. I use the auxiliary slots to give me more, um, more hold space, but it only has one auxiliary slot, so that makes me pretty limited in what I can do to increase it. How's this one? Mm, this one has less armor pieces. The weapons are the same. One small, one large. Two extra. Plus two bridges. Got three bridges in total. Same number of auxiliary slots. And then, oh, more hold space, more people, more fuel efficiency, more health. I think I like this more. So, what's the main difference between the two? This one gives you more hold space and more people. This one gives me less. What am I giving up by getting this one? I am stuck with just one heavy slot, not two. Mm, I'm not going to have as much health. I won't have three things of armor, I'll only have one. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So it's more like combat stuff, it looks like. This one is better for trading. The mullet class liner has more storage base, more people, more auxiliary slots and, and whatnot. And this one is more honed for fighting specifically because it has a lot of armor and two heavy armament slots. But you sacrifice um, auxiliary slots and people and hold. Hmm. I don't like how this thing looks. I mean, don't get me wrong. It looks pretty cool, but like it's kind of... I don't know, it seems over the top, like, it looks opulent. It looks like something, it looks sort of like a, like a golden dreadnought, I think they were called. Looks something like that, like something a rich prick would have, <laughs> but it's damn good. Anyway, something to dream about. Yeah, when I have enough money to afford it, I think I'll get the Mala class liner, despite how it looks. Okay. Daedalian Engineering. What can we get? Show me that tier 3 stuff. Look at all that. Oh my god. They even have tier 4. Jesus Christ. Okay. Um. Oh, they have better shielding. Yeah, so up until now, the only shielding I've been able to find is just tier 1 plus 10 armor. This is tier 2 plus 15 armor. A dark Eleutherian wood with correspondence sigils visible in the grain of the cross section when it is felled. It may give your crew the willies, but it's a damn good plating. It is damn good. Do they have. Oh my god, they even have better armor. Oh, wait. Oh, this is armor that doesn't go into the armor slot. So, kind of a special thing. If you really, really wanted more health, you could sacrifice another slot for this. Mm, this is proper armor. Tier 3, there of course, 50 iron. Damn, I want more iron. I'm so close to 50. 22 armor, that's so good. Oh my god, they even have tier 4 iron at 75 plus. That's probably never happening. Or maybe like end game. Yeah. Um. Well, let's start from the best. Right, let's see if I can equip any of the best things and just see see what I have the stats for. Do I have 75 in anything? I don't. Because if I did, it'd be in either Veils or Mirror. So nothing Tier 4 is going to work. Ready Baggage Handlers, I already have that. Yep. Interior Support Pillars, if I wanted to give up an Auxiliary Slot, I don't. Hmm, what is this? This is a small armament. Cotterall and Hathersage Vala. At thy word, and at thy look, death enrobes me about. A rapid fire cannon that manages both heat and wanton devastation with admirable alacrity. Rapid fire cannon. Okay, that sounds like it'd be a pretty good replacement for this. Which is short range rapid firing gun. Well, this is described as a gun, this is a cannon, but it sounds like they'd serve a similar function. Putting out lots of damage in a short amount of time if I'm close to an enemy. Otherwise, I would just use the, uh, the Her Renewed Majesty's Jubilee. <laughs> what a name. Hmm, but then again, there's this. What is... Oh, Iron 50 Plus. Automatic shotgun. Ah, shotgun, so it's going to spread really wide. I don't want that. I want something that has... 
Yeah, like a gun. Something that maybe doesn't go all that far, but goes reasonably fast and has some accuracy. Let's just get that right now. Yeah. I guess I'll like, equip it later, or can I do it? Oh, there we go. Looking forward to checking that out in just a minute. Let's see if there's anything else. Gleaming Galley. Ah, oh, hearts. There's probably not going to be anything better than what I have at tier 2, except for the armor. Right? I mean, cozy cabins, I've already seen that. I don't need quarters. Yeah. Do I want to buy this shielding? Because, like... I think I'm going to be at 50 plus iron pretty soon. What am I what am I at? 27 plus 17. Two sevens is 14. So 30 plus 14, which is 44. So I'm six away. I think I'd wait, rather wait. Yeah, I'm going to wait. I'll have 50 iron relatively soon. Let's check out this new weapon, huh? So that's a normal big rocket. This is the new one. Ooh. Yeah, it's definitely a lot slower than the gun, because it is like a cannon, but it is still pretty fast, and the projectiles move very fast, too. Like, those move really fast. I think much faster than even the rocket. Let me fire both. Oh yeah, like twice as fast. And it looks super cool too. It's got a nice like reddish orangish trail. That is very cool. Is there anything more to do actually at Pan? I guess buy some supplies. Yeah, buy some supplies. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go out for a prospect right now. I want to go speak with all the stations. Uh, not stations. Mm, platforms. So I've already been to the revolutionaries at Winter's Reside. Let's go check out the Brazen Brigade. Actually... Actually, let's save that for the next episode. I'll just dock... And then explore it in the next episode. Look at this place, my god. Hold on, just... Oh, good, I didn't get hurt. Look at how freaking creepy this is. They have, like, huge skull-esque statues and all sorts of fires around. This place looks downright demonic and cool. Yeah. Judging by this picture, they do seem rather demonic. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to check out the Brazen Brigade.